All right, I'm going to caulk up this little Harrisoft 12 here with some cotton caulking. Now, I've put a plank in on this side right here, and uh, the seams are quite tight. So I'm going to start with those seams. And uh, this bottom one's a little tighter than the top one, so I'm going to caulk this one first. And that's actually going to shuffle the plank over just a tiny bit in a matter of thousands. And then I'm going to caulk this one after this one's done. Now I'm going to twist the cotton. I'm not going to use the traditional tucking method like you normally see done. I'm going to twist the cotton myself and I'm going to tuck it into the seam with a caulker's wheel and then set it with an iron. These are the tools that I'm going to use now. This is just a little reefing hook here. This is a putty knife that's been rounded on the end. This is a caulker's wheel and so also is that one. I'm going to use this one, my favorite. This is a little caulking iron. It's kind of narrow and very thin and this is my caulker's mallet. This is a pound of caulking or a ream of caulking. I'm going to open it up here, pick up the loose end here and I'm going to start balling it up right here because I wouldn't want to be trying to ball it or pull it out of this ream because it's a little difficult to get it out of there from time to time and I don't want to pull it off or make it thin in any one spot. So you see I'm coping with this first and then I'm going to go caulking afterwards. I'm taking my rolled up ball of cotton and I'm going to go aft on this first seam and I'm going to tuck it into the seam where it's the tightest. And then I'm going to pay the cotton now all the way up forward a little longer than what I need and I'm going to break it off. Now I'm going to put it between my hands and I'm going to roll it up I'm going to keep it stretched when I roll it up so it doesn't get shorter and shorter as I roll it. Now I'm going to smooth it out a little bit, take a look at it, maybe roll it a couple more times. Now I'm going to tuck it in at the forward end, and then I'm going to go back aft and start rolling the cotton right down the middle of the seam the best that I can. I can't really see the seam under the cotton, but I can feel it. So as long as I creep along and roll back and forth, I can get it pushed in there to some extent. And I'm going to Go from one end of the seam all the way down to the other end doing that. And then what I'm going to do is come back and re-roll it. I'm going to roll it in a little bit deeper until you don't see any of the cotton protruding out of the seam. But it's not in there very deep. It's not in there deep enough to put seam compound over. So what I have to do now is pick up a caulking iron and my mallet and I'm going to set the cotton a little bit further into the seam, being very careful not to push it out the back. Now like I said, the seam is nice and tight so it's not too much chance of me pushing it out the back, but if it was much wider, it's a possibility. And look at the seam once in a while so you can see how deep it is in there bead of cotton should be right down the middle of it and quite narrow so that the plank, when they get wet, it swells around the bead on both sides and leaves the cotton very hard to pull out in any way because the planking's swelled around it. I've caulked from here forward with twisted cotton, but the seam starts to get a little bit wider back here where I haven't put the plank in. This is the original seam work right here, and I can't caulk it with the twisted cotton, so I'm going to pick up my iron and caulk it in a traditional manner, looping the cotton in place. Now we're going to do the top seam, the seam above the first one, and I'm going to do it basically the same way. I'm going to take my ball of cotton, then I'm going to pay the cotton out all the way up forward. Now I'm going to take it in between my hands and spin it. Once you start to spin it, the cotton gets much, much stronger and it's harder to rip apart. Now I'm going to take and tuck it into the seam up forward a little bit and it's just parallel in the seam here a little bit and then I can actually roll it back and forth with my hand a little bit like that and that neatens up the wind very easily. Now I'm going to take my wheel and start back aft and start wheeling it in and I'm going to try to wheel right down the middle of the cotton and keep the wheel behind the cotton so that the wheel always stays in the seam. You roll it back and forth, back and forth a little bit and get it tucked in there a little bit and keep going forward. The most important thing here with this wheel is, is that the wheel's very, very sharp and you've got to keep it in the seam. If you go alongside the seam, you're just going to chop the planking right up considering the planking is very soft. So you wheel along and you do it in little stages and you keep wheeling back and making sure that your wheel stays in the seam like that and then you just wheel it in there just enough to get it to stick. I'm going to take the same wheel and wheel it again. This time, I'm actually going to keep the wheel a little bit alongside the cotton because it's going to roll the cotton a little bit as I go and I'm going to push it in a little deeper and really what I'm after is to get all the cotton just below the surface on the outside. 
Now we're going to pick up a caulking iron here and set the cotton a little bit deeper. This is the iron I'm going to use. Now it's a narrow iron because of these narrow little seams. It's easier to work and it's very thin so that it doesn't pry the wood open any more than necessary. All I want to do is bang on the cotton, not on the wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the seam like this and tap it with my caulking mallet. Then I'm going to rock it back like this and move forward. And the idea of that is, is that the tail end of the iron right here stays in the seam as I go along like that. I rock it and then bang on it. Then rock it and tap on it. Rock it and tap on it like that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. That's the way it's done. Now you want to keep in mind that this planking is only a half an inch thick. So you don't want to set it in there too deeply or too firmly. You also don't want to push in too much cotton or roll it up too much or roll two strands together or anything like that. It won't go in. You can actually, on a very, very tight seam, you can actually split the cotton down the middle so you roll it up. You're only rolling a half a strand to get it in there. This was a perfect size for one strand. Now, I've got it hanging out into the rabbit line a little bit up forward because I'm just going to rip it off a little shorter and tuck it in. And then when I caulk the rabbit line up forward, I'm going to caulk right over those end pieces right there. And then I'm going to work my way down. Now, the next thing we're going to do after that is we're going to start on the other side. Now, the other side's a whole different story because I didn't put a plank in the other side. The seams are not tight on the outside or the inside. So if I tried to put pre-twisted cotton, it would just fall right through. If I try to loop it, I'm not so sure I could get away with that because the planking is just too thin to do it. You're talking about pushing that bead back maybe three sixteenths of an inch or so. And it might look great from this side, but when you go inside and look at it, you've pushed the cotton through the seam. It's unacceptable. I can't do it. So I've got a whole different method that I'm going to go through on the other side. It's going to be very interesting. And uh, it's something I haven't really tried before necessarily, but I'm pretty confident that's going to work out really well.